Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to go through and demonstrate the procedure to rebuild your RCV axle shaft. Um, inside this, uh, the bell between the inner and outer shaft is a um, CV joint, which is composed of an in and an outer cage and uh, ball bearings, and they will wear out over time. Um, mine had about 40,000 miles on them. Uh, for most people, even with regular servicing, it seems to be that 40 to 50,000 miles is about what you're going to get before the joints start to wear out. And what will happen is you'll start to get noise. You'll start when you're driving the vehicle, when you're moving, have the wheel turned, you'll start to hear clicking um, coming from the front end. Um, and basically that's just going to be excess play in those uh, ball bearings and in that cage. So the procedure is to rebuild them is relatively simple. Um, basically you just need a vise, some tools of persuasion, and, um, and a rebuild kit. Um, the rebuild kit comes with a new inner and outer cage, six new ball bearings, and then there should be a new uh, C-clip, uh, which is the retaining clip for this inner shaft where it uh, inserts into the cage. So we're going to get started with rebuilding this. The first step is going to be to put this in the vise, get this boot off. Then we'll have to flip it around, extract the, uh, the inner shaft from the uh, outer stub shaft um, because all the working components that we'll be working with will be in this stub shaft and in this outer bell. Okay, a couple different ways we can get this boot off. Um, sometimes you can come down in here and just move the outer stub shaft all the way to the side and pry it down. Um, but in a lot of cases, you're going to have to give it a little more persuasion than that. There's a lot of suction in there, so you may have to just drive something in between there. There we go. Break that suction. Okay, um, <laughs> that one was a little tougher than the other side. Ended up moving the stub shaft and using a brass punch um, right down on the edge and was able to pop the boot off. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out of the vise, take the boot off, um, clean, we'll get that cleaned up, and then we'll flip this around so we can take this inner shaft off of the stub shaft. Well, getting the boot over top of this this indent here, which basically is, if this is for a JLJT platform where you'd have your front axle disconnect, this just allows you, if you're replacing the two piece axles of the, with the front axle disconnect, you can leave your motor in and the collar or the fork that's on the FAD will be able to move back and forth. Getting this over that is uh, not easy to say the least. So I'm just gonna leave it where it is. We can still extract the shaft out of here. Just gonna take a couple hits of, uh, again, some persuasion there. Okay, so, as you can see, see that, how loose that is in there? You can hear that rattling. So now you're just gonna strike this. And what I'm striking on, obviously, is this, this inner cage that's going to be being replaced anyway. Okay, so now I'll take the inner shaft, get that out of the way so we can get the stub shaft in to get disassembled. Uh, 
Okay, so we've got that secured in the vise. Ah, so now what we're going to do is you have to drive this race down on the opposite side of which ball bearing you want to take out and work your way from side to side. So we're going to put this on here. Now, when you have this in the vise, um, I mean, you just need to you just need to snug it up just so it holds it. You don't need to kill it. Obviously, you don't want to mess up the splines on the end there. this out and then what you got to do is you rotate it until you get these spaces to line up in between two of the holes and then the whole unit will come right out now at this point it's just going to be reassembly just got to clean this out really good and then we'll be able to install the new cages and bearings Okay, so here's our parts kit. Now in this case, this is a JLGJT Dana 44, so it's a CVJ11389-R. Um, they are different ones. Here's your C-clip for the retaining clip for the inner axle shaft, your six new bearings, and you have your inner and outer cage. Now um, when this installs, it actually, and um, I'll show you as we're inserting, it goes in just like this. This faces out of the uh, outer stub shaft toward the inner. This one with the little taper down the bottom on the inner will be pointing down, so it literally will sit in inside just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get us in position to start uh, reassembling it. Okay, so we've got our outer stub shaft all cleaned up. We're inserting the cage. As you can see, there's an inner and outer cage. The top of the cage where it ta really tapers in is going to point out on the inner cage where you've got this taper on the bottom and you can see there's a groove here for the retaining ring on the axle shaft that will go down so to put it in you're going to line up two of these flat spots with basically in between two of the um, or four, I should say four of the uh, ball bearing slots and you'll be able to slide it right in and then you can rotate it into position. Now, installing the ball bearings is gonna be the opposite of, um, you're basically just like the way we took them out. We're gonna rotate one side up, install a ball bearing. We may be able to go right over and work our way around and then tap it down and get the opposite sides in. That one in there. a little bit. Now we'll just have to give it a little tap.
might have to literally tap the ball bearing. And then we'll work our way around until we get all six ball bearings in. Now the, the tapping we're doing is, you know, we don't have to kill it. Um, if you really have to hammer hard on it, then probably something is probably bent or just really worn and locked up. But as you can see, I'm really just tapping. And that is... That is now completely installed. So what we'll do now <clears throat> is we'll grease it up. I'll get the Molly grease, put grease in all around here, all around in here. I'll shoot some in through the grease fitting so we can get some down inside the cage in the inside here. Um, we'll get the axle, sh the inner shaft back together. We'll be able to pop that in and move it back and forth and make sure we work the grease around in there. And then that will be it for rebuilding an RCV axle shaft. Okay, so what I'll do is there's the grease fitting here. I'm gonna put some, this will just put some grease in the bottom. As you can see, that just got some down into the center that I'll work into the bottom of the of the race and cage there. We'll put this back in the vise. And then I'll just come around here. Stick our finger down in here and work this up into the race. Now with got our inner shaft, we got the new seat retaining clip in there, boots all cleaned up. So what I'm gonna do is bring the boot up out of the way. We'll line our splines up. As you can see, we can move this around, but I got to get this axle shaft in. This C clip is a lot stiffer than the one that was in my other kit. Okay, just took a little bit more persuasion than I anticipated. And then, as you can see now, we can use the leverage of that inner shaft to rotate that joint around, work that grease in there. Make sure all the ball joint ball bearings are lubed. All right. And 
And that's it. That's all there is to rebuilding your RCV axle shafts. Now you can either reinstall or put them away, however whatever you need to do. The boot will have to come off. That's on the shaft to go in. Um, it's going to take quite a bit to, we got to work it over this here. You just got to put some lube on it and you might even have to tap it with the hammer and work it over. Um, not an easy thing to do, but unfortunately to get this in a JLJT, this boot has to come off because you have to put this inside the knuckle and then slide the axle shaft through it as you're putting it into the axle. But that completes the uh, rebuilding procedure for your RCV axle shafts. Um, we have all new uh, inner and outer cages, races, and, um, ball bearings all in there. I hope this helps anyone that's going to do the same thing. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave them below. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.